During an OSINT investigation, photos can be a great source of information. For one, there's the information encoded in the photo you can see, and then there might be even more in the form of geotagging or EXIF data. Today, we'll take a look at cross-platform ways we can examine EXIF data in this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. EXIF data, or Exchangeable Image File Format data, is available on a lot of different files besides just images. In images, though, there's some specific information that can be a lot more helpful, such as geo information which can allow you to identify the exact location where the photo was taken. Now, exploring this metadata can be of great use during an OSINT investigation, where only a couple photos might be the only clues that you have to work with. With EXIF tools, we can work to go behind the scenes and learn more about the device that was used to create the file, where the person was at the time they took it, and the exact time that it was taken. Now, all this information can lead to finding out more about the subject, whether it's the device they use for exploring potential vulnerability, or if you need to tie the same person to a whole range of photos, you can explore this information to maybe identify that the photos use all of the same types of uh, details, and that they use the same software and the same device that the person is known to carry. Now, this sort of attribution is only possible when we take a peek behind this metadata. So to do so, we'll be exploring three different types of ways of doing so that are cross-platform and easy to use. The first is a command line script that allows us to dig into the data. The second is a website that allows us to both upload and strip information in case we want to send the file to a third party. And the last is a browser extension that allows us to pull this information from any image on a website we might happen to be on. Now, to use this, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. But in general, it's cross-platform and easy to use, so as soon as you have some images you'd like to search, you should be ready to go. Today, we're going to take a look at some photos and see what we can learn about them aside from what we can see visually. Now, this means digging into the metadata. So when we're dealing with photos like this, where we might not know where they were taken or what device they were taken on, we'll be using a couple of command line tools first in order to learn what we can about these and maybe take the next step in identifying who took them or where they were taken. Now in Kali Linux, there's a tool that's really, really useful. And if it's not installed, you can type apt install xf. So this will go ahead and install uh, xf if it hasn't already been installed. But once you have it, you can type man xf to see exactly what it does. Now, as you can see, it's a small command line utility to show and change uh, XF information in JPEG files. So while this can't handle PNGs, there are plenty of other services that can. And in this one, I just like the fact that it's generally included in Kali Linux, and if it's not, it's incredibly easy to set up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press Q to exit. And in order to use this, we can of course go ahead and look at the help file. Um, oops. Hmm. There we go. So it wants the full help. All right. So we can see there's a lot of different commands we can run with this. Uh, however, this is not all necessary to just dump the information from a file. So when we were first kind of checking this out, um, I was playing with all the flags and exporting to uh, XML, but really it's much more simple to just take a file and write XF, and then the file path to the actual file. So here we're gonna just take this picture of a cat and we can see all this information is pulled directly from the file. So we can see that it's a Samsung phone. We can see the um, width and length of the photo, which might be uh, kind of tying it to a particular application that was taking that photo. We can see the orientation of the phone when it was taken. And the list really goes on, as you can see. This can quite accurately fingerprint the particular device that took this, both on the software and the hardware characteristics that are baked into this metadata that's available for anybody that wants to run this on a photo. 
Now here further down, you can see there's actually GPS information as well. And this is incredibly accurate because it's taken from the cell phone, which was probably using a GPS to get it. So even in a city where the GPS signals might be bouncing around, you can expect this to be pretty accurate. So what does that mean? Do I need to be afraid to send this photo out? Or what does that really kind of conclude to? Well, if I were to upload this to uh, Instagram or Twitter, then this information would be stripped out. However, if I were to email this to someone directly or post it on like Imgur or some of the things we'll take a look at in a minute, then it means that the information could still be retained and unintentionally reveal more than we wanted to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go back to this other image and in running this, you'll see that while there is some metadata, not everything is available because it's been stripped out. So probably the most serious information we can pull from this is a GPS location. And here, while we can see that uh, there's a particular orientation that's uh, 3, 30, 24, this one is, um, is uh, 30, 24, 40, 32. Okay, so while they do have the same X and Y dimensions, there are other characteristics here that might allow us to differentiate that different phones took these photos. Okay, so that's how this works in the command line. But if you don't want to work with command line, can you still get access to all this information about various photos that you might encounter during an OSINT investigation? Well, the answer is yes, because aside from there being a command line script, there's also tools in a browser that allow you to just go ahead and do this on your own. So here we have uh, a tool that's uh, verexf.com and you can go ahead and upload an image and then remove the exif data if it's something you're worried about. So here, if I want to, I can go ahead and go to downloads and take uh, this one here and then click view exif and it should upload the photo and then dump the information that we're able to retrieve. So if you have any photos that you're thinking of sending out and you want to make sure that there's nothing sensitive here, this is probably worth your while because you can not only upload it, but then immediately see if you want to remove that data, if it's something that you don't want to include. Now here we can see that, uh, yes, we would definitely want uh, to remove this because it's even populated, it looks like it's trying to make a, a map or something out of the information it's managed to pull from this particular set of metadata. And here we go. Uh, it's trying to show exactly where this was taken, which I don't really want to show on our show. So uh, here's another example of a great online resource. This is xf.regex.info. So this allows us to take either a uh, URL, so a, a photo on the internet, and here's I'm just going ahead and looking around for various things. I found this photo of a watch on Photo Bucket. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the link location, or let's see, I'll copy the image location, and I can drop it into this tool. And instead of uploading something from my own uh, computer, I can verify that I'm not a robot. Let's see how good I am at this. Bridges, all right, okay, great. And then click on view image data. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that we pulled actually longitude and, lat and latitude out of this random photo. Uh, and we can even see the model of the camera that it was taken with. So that means that this camera, uh, this is probably a smartphone, uh, included GPS information and embedded it. So even when this person just uploaded this random photo, then uh, it actually retained the information and we were able to see where it was taken. So here's two various online resources to, in order to actually look at the data that's included in our own photos, or maybe take a look at photos on a website that we're uh, maybe poking around on and we want to identify who's taking the photos behind it. Uh, that might allow us to determine the GPS location of where those photos had been taken in the first place. Now, on this website here, when I went to Photo Bucket, you might have noticed a little pop-up that said a GPS location. Now, the next thing I want to go into is browser extensions. And there's a number of them that are super interesting. And today we're going to be focusing on Firefox, but for Chrome, there are a number of different options as well. Now, what these browser extensions do is allow us to identify immediately whether or not GPS data exists. And one of them that I'm using is just an automated pop-up and go ahead and, oh, it hates robots. Okay. Uh, well, when we go to this, if we, we should have the photo still there. Oh. 
there we go. Now we should be able to do a couple different things with this photo. First, if we right mouse click it, we can use the XF Viewer um, Firefox add-on in order to directly view information from uh, the browser without needing to actually put it into a website. This is one of my favorites because you can see the link, you can scroll to any of the fields, and here you can see in the GPS information, we have quite a lot of stuff, including generating a nice Google Maps URL. So if we click on that, then it should take us to the location that this photo was actually taken, and we should also be able to see the actual time and the GPS uh, dates, and we can see, actually, let's, let's see where this is. Um, so I'm gonna exit out of this, and if we pull back a little bit, we can see that this photo was taken. Where are we? Somewhere in Spain. All right, cool. So this wristwatch was taken, uh, the photo of the wristwatch was taken somewhere in Spain. It was encoded with GPS information, uploaded to the internet, oh, not that one, uploaded to the internet, and then uh, we were able to trace that back just by examining the exit data. Now, similarly, if there's something on your computer and you just wanna, here's the photo from before, drop this picture in of a cat and then click on the EXIF viewer, then this is an easy way to go ahead and just pull the information and see, hey, where's the um, GPS information? Where's the uh, other information about the uh, device that actually produced this? And pull this information out and either verify whether or not somebody um, is the same person that took a series of images or maybe the exact location of where those images were produced. Now, of course, you can use this in all sorts of various ways, both to delete metadata that might be a little bit more than you wanna share with the internet at large, or to uh, track down clues you find during an OSINT investigation that require you to actually kind of pull this information out for yourself. Now, if you're curious how to get to this, you can click on this menu in Firefox and go to add-ons and you should be able to find these by just typing in EXIF. So here are the two that I've added. The first is EXIF Viewer, and the second is GPS Detect. GPS Detect is the one that will automatically alert you when a GPS um, tag is detected in photos on a website, which is pretty handy because it just pops up and lets you know. And then EXIF Viewer will actually allow you to right mouse click on any photo and attempt to extract EXIF data from it. Between the two of these and the various websites and command line tools, EXIF data is an amazing way to learn about the source of an image if it comes up in an OSINT investigation. It can be pretty shocking to learn the information you can pull from an image. And if you're concerned about your privacy being at risk, you should know that most platforms do strip off this data if you're uploading something like to Instagram or to Twitter. However, if you're just sending a file via email, that is a way that some of this data could be leaked. So if you're concerned about this sort of thing, you should go into your phone settings and make sure to disable any of geo encoding because this will prevent it from saving any geo data, which at least will prevent your location from being leaked. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions about EXIF data, you can check out the article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter because we'd love to hear from you. I'll see you next time.